Okay, so I'm just going to walk you through my real quick uh, five and a half gallon, I call it a nano sump, um, for my 20 gallon uh, community tank. Um, as you can see, the water is fairly clear at this point. Uh, you got about, I don't know, seven, eight fish in there, a couple snails, things like that. Um, up until yesterday, I actually had a uh, rainbow shark in there as well, but I moved him. Uh, anyway, this is my basic sump design. Um, you know, like I said, five and a half gallons. I know the uh, the uh, silicone job is not perfect, um, you know, but it does the job, and uh, you know, it seems to be working pretty well so far. So, um, I uh, you'll notice right away first that uh, I don't actually have a drip plate. Um, what I'm using instead is uh, a couple layers of uh, some of the filter floss, as well as some some of the um, plastic canvas sandwiched in between to allow for a little bit more flow. Uh, the two little pieces up on top here, those are very specifically because the you know the water was kind of foaming up over the top of uh, right over here, um, you know, kind of just spilling right over here into the into the second section. Um, what I ended up doing for the bottom was I ended up making like a little uh, kind of table set out of um, some some sections of of PVC uh, as well as some of that plastic canvas again. Um, what's cool about that is that it gave me the ability to just kind of put a drop-in basket in there. Um, it basically made it so that I can put in pretty much whatever I want. So I took the uh, the filter elements that I had been using previously in a hang on the back filter and just pretty much dropped them in there. Um, it might be you might be able to see it, but uh, there's actually some a few Mario balls straight ahead in there. And right now I've actually got a couple of water lilies um, that are that are just you know the the bulbs are down in there and they're actually getting soaked real good so that I can eventually plant them. Um, you'll notice that uh, you know the water spills underneath. This is pretty much like Joey's design from uh, DIY Fish Keepers. Um, and I ended up using a fluval, I forget what, I, I want to say it was like 304 or something like that. Uh, one of the filter sets is about $7 to, to buy the sponge for that. Um, that helps filter out any of the, uh, you know, so, some of the finer elements that are in there. Um, and then it actually goes over, you know, or under, excuse me, uh, up through here. And that's all filled completely with lava rocks. Tediously spent all the time to put each and every individual rock in there so that I get, you know, as much surface area as I possibly could. Um, and then over on the far side here is the pump section. Um, that's just a simple power head. That's the $20 power head from uh, Petco. Seems to work great. Uh, runs through a 5 8 ID hose all the way back up to the top of the tank through here and this actually showcases my idea for a siphon break um, instead of trying to drill a hole that you know might get clogged or you know covered by a snail or something like that what I ended up doing is getting one of these uh, these um, uh, cross elbows or whatever you want to call them uh, but basically it's an elbow uh, I'll come over on the side here so you can see it it's an elbow that comes up and then has an extension off to the side and what I've done is I put an NPT elbow fitting on that and then I can adjust this length. I can basically on the on the water level in there, uh, and that will give me, you know, full controllability over how much water back siphons down into the uh, sump. Um, you can kind of see here. That's this is the basis for my overflow. This is probably the least perfect part of the design up here. Um, you know, it's not quiet. Uh, it's not loud, but it's not quiet either. You might even be able to hear it a little bit right now. Um, if I were to change something about this, one of the things that I'd probably change is I would move this uh, this union a little bit farther downstream, so it was actually on you know on on the one of the vertical pipes instead of being on the horizontal. I think that would give me a little bit more uh, just aesthetic value for it. Um, this cap up here on top uh, basically has a hole in it to just kind of quiet the noise coming through that that standpipe. Um, but aside from that, the overflow works great and it pretty much flows just about as much water as I need it to. Um, you know, it comes down into here. I've got a union so I can swivel it if I need to. Uh, it comes down through these elbows and consequently, I'll come around the side here so you can see this. But this is the basic design of what I've got right here. Um, it seems to cover the, the entirety of that filter floss pretty well. Again, probably not as good as a drip plate, but it does work. Um, and it's effectively, you know, made it so that I can have a, a nice little small wet dry filter. Um, you know, and, and be able to uh, to filter this tank. You know, prior to this, the, the hang on the back filter that was there, just really not quite doing the job. Um, so I decided I needed an upgrade, and it looks to be doing a pretty good job. So if you have any questions about that, you know, feel free to comment on my YouTube. I will absolutely, you know, try to get back to you if you have any questions or, or need some advice or anything like that. But, uh, yeah, that's my Nano Sump Design. Thanks.